For more on Hollywood and the impact on COVID-19, Nihar Sinha joins us live from Los Angeles via Skype. Uh, Nihar, thanks very much for joining us. I really appreciate it. A lot to talk about. That was a pretty interesting story. A lot of that I simply didn't know. Time was Hollywood simply planned to roll out of a film, a press junk at the red carpet, then let theater goers decide if it's going to be a hit or a flop. But right now, that isn't the case. How is the industry accommodating this new world? Yeah, I think it's, it's really tough, and I think that different studios that have different specific strategic considerations are taking slightly different approaches. So we heard about Warner Brothers and their approach with Tenet. I think another really interesting one is Disney. So they had Mulan scheduled to come out this summer, and uh, that was scheduled to be a, a big sort of tentpole blockbuster, Aladdin and uh, um, uh, The Lion King last year. Mm -hmm. Both did over, uh, you know, a billion dollars in, in global box office, and Disney's decided to release Mulan direct to Disney Plus at a premium price point of $29.99 in the U.S., um, but in territories where they don't plan to launch Disney Plus, they're going to pursue a theatrical run where they can, most notably being China. Um, and so China being the second most important uh, region globally in terms of theatrical box office, um, that's going to be interesting to see their sort of hybrid approach um, and that's not a decision that they made lightly, right? Sure. Uh, you talk about billion to $2 billion box office grosses. Um, that's a huge chunk of, of revenue. And, and that theatrical run is super important for those big tent poles. But Disney also has Disney Plus to think about, which is obviously a very, very strategically important initiative for them. So they're going to be paying attention not just to the economics and how much of that revenue projection they sure. can actually hit, but also whether they can drive subscribers to the D Plus platform. So, the, the broad parameters are the same, but specific differences among the different studios are also going to be dictating their specific approaches. Exactly. And Disney has so much at stake with its theme parks down in, in, in attendance and ESPN, its network, uh, not doing great with no live sports. But let's talk about the benefits or perhaps pratfalls of opening somewhere else around the world or go right to streaming on demand. What do they have to take into consideration? Yeah, so I think one thing that's really interesting is traditionally there is a 90-day exclusive theatrical window um, traditionally when movies are released. And, you know, billion dollar, $2 billion, these big tentpole box office is super important. That said, for most of these big tentpole releases, more than 50%, almost 70% of the total box office is earned really in those first three, four weeks, the first month. And so you think about opportunities to shorten that exclusive 90-day theatrical window, if not for the giant movies, then maybe for some of the smaller ones. And then you can test out ways to actually increase the overall revenue of the film or find a way to make it more accessible in these other windows, premium video on demand being mm -hmm. the, the fastest growing one. That's an approach taken by Universal for a number of their movies. Okay, if I'm not mistaken, Top Gun, which was supposed to open this summer, moved to next year. If, if not that one, I'm sure a number of them have. How important is that to put off something that you have that much at stake in for one year? I think it's important to keep in mind that we talk about the experimentation and going straight to streaming for the smaller releases. For, for this year, you saw it with uh, Judd Apatow's King of Staten Island. You saw it with Nisha Ganatra's The High Note. But even Universal, which released both those movies, for their really big tentpole blockbusters like Fast and Furious 9 or Minions, Rise of Gru, they moved those to 2021. I mean, these are massive investments, nine-figure investments, and we're talking... Uh, you know, a lot of revenue that they're planning, uh, you know, entire businesses around. And so they don't want to take any chances with those huge franchises. They want to make sure that they get the full sort of full theatrical run and support. Mm -hmm. But when you get into smaller budget titles, especially, I think there's a much higher appetite to experiment with different models. Nihar, we're kind of tight on time here, but I'm very curious that in that story, we heard the one theater owner thinking that by September, they'd be open again. Do you think that that is realistic? And what has the virus done to box office receipts in the United States and abroad? Well, it's been, it's had a staggering effect, frankly. I mean, in June, there was projections of 2020 box office in the U.S. decreasing by 50%. It may be as high as 70%. Um, we could have the lowest year on record in the U.S. since the 70s, much the same uh, abroad. But that being said, 
You know, their screen starting to open back up in China, and they've done really good numbers since they've been open. So I think there are encouraging signs that when the virus allows, people can get back out. There is pent up demand, but for a lot of these smaller uh, theater owners, they may not have that kind of time. Yeah, and a lot of people are simply wearing out Netflix. Nihar Sinha, thanks very much. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me.